Hey, what's up guys? Vilo reached out to me and sent me their mesh Wi-Fi system for free to do an honest review. They didn't pay me for this review. So, this is a super budget mesh Wi-Fi system and I'm actually curious to know how well this is going to perform because it's not the fastest mesh Wi-Fi um, at all, really. This thing is really designed to cover a lot of square footage, so they advertise up to 4,500 square feet. Now, take that number with a grain of salt because it really depends on your place. You know, how many walls you have, whether they're concrete walls, whether you live in a building with other wireless interference, all of that stuff tends to reduce your range. So take that number with a grain of salt. But connects up to 120 devices and setup is quick. It is a dual band system, so it's a 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequencies and it's Wi-Fi 5 or wireless AC. So it doesn't have the latest Wi-Fi 6 standard. But then again, this is a super budget system, and honestly, I'm really curious to know how well this is gonna do. And it has three gigabit ethernet ports on each device, which is always a good thing, and they have parental controls, and I believe that's included. So let's open this up, see what's inside, and go from there. Now, if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button for more Mesh Wi-Fi videos. I have a whole bunch of other ones coming up, as well as the Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 and a few others so always doing mesh wi-fi videos among other things all right so get a little manual quick startup guide you know download the app and stuff sure this is probably the cords and stuff i would imagine Let's see what's inside this thing is this a... yeah i guess it opens like this so power Imagine three power cords. Yep, that's it. So, this is probably a Cat 5e if I had to... Oh, actually, wow, it's a Cat 6. That's a good thing because, I mean, Cat 5e and Cat 6 are both... Uh, do support gigabit, so it's fine. But typically, I see people, uh, companies putting Cat 5e, so it's, it's a good thing that they put Cat 6. Now, this one does support 100 to 240 volts, so it should work in a lot of places. And let's get to the router portion of it. So it looks like a minimalistic design. It's definitely smaller than a lot of the mesh Wi-Fi's that I typically test. So you get a little nice file on the top. I wonder if it lights up or anything. Maybe just this part. We'll find out when we turn it on. And you get three LAN ports, power, there's a reset. And that's pretty much it. And you get a little power button here. Maybe the WPS button, I'm not sure. And I imagine just two others, which are exactly the same. Yep. So again, three gigabit ports. And one more. Yep, same exact thing. Yeah, so box is uh, pretty much empty. Good to go. Later. All right, guys. It's been about a week since I've unboxed this thing and I did all the speed tests and range tests. I have all the numbers. We're going to go over all of that. But before we do, let's start quickly with setup. So setup was very, very simple. You download the Vilo app from the App Store or the Play Store. You create a user account with them and it just asks you to plug this thing in, you know, connect the WAN port to your modem. Uh, powered on and stuff very very simple and it connects literally took me two to three minutes no issues awesome and then once you set up one it says like hey if you got the two pack or three pack or whatever just literally power on the next one and it will automatically configure itself which i did so once i powered this other one on it everything was set up so very very simple but in my week of use I did notice an issue with it. So it did drop in connection a few times. So, which was not that great. There was a firmware update, I did get that. And even after that, I just wanted to use it for a few extra days. So I'm like, let me just see if this thing works. And I did still get a few more drops. So I do hope that they get a new firmware update, which resolves that issue. When you get that, when you drop in connection, all you need to do is cycle power or within the Vilo app, if you literally just click restart, you're good to go. That's pretty much all you need to do. Testing environment. So because this is a Wi-Fi 5 mesh system, I just tested it with my Pixel 5, which is a Wi-Fi 5 device. 
Now, just for kicks, I did do a few tests with my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. Now again, Wi-Fi 6 devices are compatible with the Wi-Fi 5 mesh system and vice versa, but it can't actually utilize Wi-Fi 6, so you're not really getting those benefits. So in reality, when I did the speed test with both of these, I got very similar numbers. So I just omitted the iPhone from the test. So I just tested with the Pixel 5. Now, I do have my own speed test server. The reason why I'm doing this now, I did get a few suggestions from some of the comments. So thank you guys for uh, you know writing that stuff down. So I do read the comments. Again, if you guys have questions or comments, I do read them. I do try my best to answer them. So this thing, to isolate it, I made my own speed test server. Now, I, I used to not do this, but very recently with the previous mesh system that I tested, the ASUS CT8, I just started doing that. And I like, I like that method better because it pretty much isolates the router itself. So I'm actually just testing this instead of testing a public speed test server or testing my internet speeds. So this way I basically isolate this. It's really just my phone going through this to my computer. So really just testing how fast this thing is. Now over ethernet it's fast because it does support gigabit, but over Wi-Fi, that's the numbers I'm gonna give you guys. To keep this consistent with how I do all my other mesh Wi-Fi systems, I'm gonna use the same naming scheme. So we're gonna start with option one, which is a router by itself. So just because this came in a three pack, I realize I'm holding two, but just because it came in a three pack doesn't actually mean I need to use all three. I could just use one. And in Vilo's case, since they're all can be routers, I can pick any one of the three and just use it by itself. Now in this case, I hook up my WAN port to my modem and then I can use the other two ethernet ports to either hook it up to my computer or hook it up to an unmanaged switch and expand my ethernet port. So I have all those options and these do support gigabit. So in that case, when I did a speed test with my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, I got 603 megabits per second down and 451 megabits per second up. Now all the speeds that I'm gonna say are gonna be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. Okay, and one byte is equal to eight bits if you guys are wondering. Then moving to option three, option three is called wired backhaul. And if you guys are wondering, oh, you skipped option two. Well, I skipped option two is because in my naming scheme, option two is when I hook up a router with a non-router. So in this case, since they're both routers, even though when they're connected, the secondary one is acting as an access point, in that case, I go to option three, which is called wired backhaul. So in wired backhaul, I have one hooked up to my modem and stuff, good to go there. And then I take an ethernet port from one of these two other ones from the LAN ports, and then I wire it to the WAN port of this guy and I could put an unmanaged switch in between them, that's fine, as long as there is a physical ethernet connection going from one to the other, even if it goes through an unmanaged switch. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, okay, can I hook up two wired backhaul and one wireless backhaul? Yes, you can do that. And you could pretty much do that with any mesh Wi-Fi that I've tested. So you can mix and match, but for this, Instance, we're gonna talk about wired backhaul only. Now, in wired backhaul, this is gonna give you the best possible speeds because you have a physical ethernet going from one to the other that supports up to gigabit speeds. So, when I do the speed test on the secondary device, so in my example, if this is hooked up to my speed test server, I'm gonna do a speed test on the secondary one. Now when I do it on that, I pretty much get the same speeds, which was, in this case, 607 megabits per second down and 447 megabits per second up, which is what I would expect because it can support up to gigabit speed, so whether I'm close to the main one or the secondary one, I expect to get the same speeds. Jumping into option four, that's called wireless backhaul, which is exactly the same thing as wired backhaul, minus the ethernet cord in between them. So now these are wirelessly talking to each other. So this is hooked up to your modem, you're good to go there. This one is, let's just say, two rooms away, plugged into the power port, and these are wirelessly talking to each other. 
Now that's very, very convenient and that's really the magic of mesh Wi-Fi. But there is going to be some speed loss if you do this, especially with a dual band device. Now in this case, 175 down and 161 up. So a huge speed loss, much more than 50% of a speed loss on the secondary device. Now if you guys are wondering, what about the main one? Does that one suffer? No, the main one's pretty much always going to give you those full speeds. So in my case, right around 600 down and 450 up. But with the secondary one, once I get close to this and my device connects to this, which all of that happens automatically, there is going to be some speed loss. Well, more than some speed loss. That covers the speed test. Now let's jump in to the range test. And at 20 feet away, the speed didn't drop too much. It was 573 down and 461 up. In fact, the upload just went up a tad bit. And at 50 feet away, this was outside my place. And there was a huge drop in speed. So at 50 feet away outside, I got 59 down and 38 megabits per second up. And then at 100 feet away, which I basically started losing the connection, I got 11 down and 3 up. So that was the extent of it. Now I am more of an open area once I get outside. So the fact that this got 100 feet, please don't compare that to any of my other mesh Wi-Fi videos except the ET8 because I have recently moved. So if you've seen any of my other ones where the Eero or the Netgear Orbi and any of that stuff, that was in a different place which with much more interference much more so if i were to take some of those devices and bring it here and do new range tests with them they would go much farther because range really varies based on your location if you live in a house and there's nothing around you open space everywhere you're going to get really good range you could get a lot more than what i got if you live in a building with a lot of walls around and there's neighbors with their routers and they're all close to each other and all and it's all condensed you're going to get less range so all of that makes a huge difference so range really really varies based on location even if you're in a house and you're in the basement and you know you have one in the basement and then you have like thick concrete walls or anything like that all of that stuff's going to hurt your range so range Take that number with a grain of salt. Other than that, the Vilo app itself was pretty useful, very user friendly, doesn't give you a whole ton of options, nothing like ASUS does, but then again, not a lot of mesh systems do what ASUS does in terms of options. But you do get parental controls included, which is nice. Final thoughts, is it worth getting why or why not? Well, First of all, hopefully this whole drops and connections gets resolved because without that, I can't recommend this because especially in today's day and age where a lot of people are working from home, wouldn't it be fun if your internet cut out while you were working? So assuming that gets resolved via firmware update, unless I just happen to get a defective unit, which is possible. But if I didn't, hopefully that gets resolved quickly. So assuming that's the case and there are no more drops, then this thing is really designed for people who don't have the fastest internet speeds and are not gaming or are not streaming all the time and pretty much use the internet a little bit less or don't care as much about the internet speeds. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you have gigabit internet speeds, it's not good for that. I would definitely recommend something better. If you have 500 megabits per second, even then I still want to recommend these because the speed tests that I did are for my local speed test server. If you actually go to speedtest.net, you're going to get slower speeds than that. And that's just because there's a lot more variables involved. Now you're going to the internet, you're going to a public server, a lot of people are doing their speed tests and stuff on that. And when you're just going to YouTube and a lot of other places, a lot of people are sharing that. So you're not going to get the same speeds that and let's just say for instance the speeds i got on my local speed test server were 600 down with these right and option one but when i actually did a speed test using speedtest.net going to the internet i basically got around 380. 
So I got a lot slower because there are a lot more variables involved. So that's why I'm saying if you have internet speeds of 500, even 400, I probably still wouldn't recommend for this because I would want the mesh Wi-Fi to be faster than what my internet can do because I, I pretty much want my internet to be my bottleneck, not my mesh Wi-Fi system. So if you have internet speeds of let's just say 300 and below, you should be okay with these, especially if you use ethernet. Now if you have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi devices, probably not good for that either. Because Wi-Fi devices share speeds, especially on dual band where you're already sharing speeds, if you're on wireless backhaul especially. So long story short, I'm gonna say, if you have internet speeds of 300 and below, if you're hopefully using wired backhaul, if you're not, if you're using option for wireless backhaul, then on the secondary devices, bandwidth is not as important. Hopefully it's just like a ring doorbell or a ring cam or something like that, that you're just using that and it's okay if it's a little bit slower over there. So it's really more kind of designed for that because really being a super budget system, it's just really designed to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. Uh, it's not really designed to increase your Wi-Fi coverage while giving you phenomenal speeds because now you're getting into expensive, you know, a lot more expensive than this, I should say, uh, mesh Wi-Fi system. So if that's what you're looking for, then this is not it. But if you're someone, you know, if you occasionally use the internet, it's okay. You know, if you don't have the fastest internet and it's okay if you have to wait a little bit here and there, then, then yeah, I definitely recommend worth a try, but definitely needs to fix the drops and connections, unless again, I got a defective unit, which again is possible. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.